welcome to Yin Yoga. Feel free to sit up on a pillow. Using props can help you go deeper into the postures. I don't want you to think about them in a way that is negative. I don't want you to think about props that it's making it easier and that's not as effective. It's actually allowing you to go deeper because you're able to get your body into where it needs to go to really experience the posture without causing strain. So some challenge is good and what might be uncomfortable is often what we might need to be able to break through some of the barriers. However, strain only causes injury and I don't want you to feel that. So with that, <laughs> let's again take our seated position, close your eyes, drop your shoulders, sit deep into your sit bones. So really feel yourself grounding down here, pushing the hips, the sit bones down into the floor, into the mat. And then with that connection, draw the belly in, up and in. So feel the lower abdominals rising up and pulling in towards the back. Now drop the shoulders and slide them back. Releasing all the weight on top of them. Okay, just dropping them down and then letting go. As you slide the underarms into the body, that'll take the shoulders into a place where they are balanced in between the front body and the back body. Keeping the chin drawn in towards the throat, aligning the neck and the spine. With your eyes closed, softening the brow, softening the face, letting go of that tension that we habitually hold on to whether it's pulling the shoulders up and forward, whether it's clenching the forehead, that furrow in the brow, or the jaw. And begin to make a deeper connection to the breathing. The inhales and the exhales are gonna lengthen the breath. So let's begin just by finding the breath. Take a very deep inhale. Pause. Pull that inhale all the way up, and now exhale out through an open mouth. Really let that go. And now let the lips come together, and you'll keep the lips touching as you now breathe, and when you exhale, you'll breathe out with the lips touching so the breath will not escape through the mouth. Now we're gonna keep the breath internal. All right, so it recycles within the body. And that's what builds the heat within us. We don't need external heat. So feel yourself lengthening out the inhale. And as much time as you take on that inhale, you'll have that for the exhale. Your exhale might even go just a bit longer. depth of that breath, discovering how you can use that breath to go within. So the inhale allows you to really draw inward and the exhale allows you to surrender into that space. So if you find yourself feeling challenged, there's a softening that you can bring to that in the exhale.
going to take another deep breath right here. And then go ahead and interlace the fingers behind the head. Bring the elbows forward so they're parallel. Sit real tall. And then take the chin towards the chest. Let's see if we can stretch that neck a bit. Only push the hands into the head so far that you feel safe. Now push the head back into the hands so you can feel that support there. Keep the fingers interlaced and roll your palms up. Take the arms and lengthen. Feel the sides of your waist get longer. Feel your body get taller. Engage the abdominal area and feel that support. Good. And then as you release the hands, take the right hand behind you. Take the left hand to the right knee. Pull that belly in. And then holding on to that knee, lift the chest. Really feel it rising. Chin in, look over that right shoulder. Now look forward, release, let's switch which foot is in front or however you're seated, just switch the angle of the feet. And then let's go ahead and reach the left hand back, take the right hand for the left knee, and again, pull in and then lift up. Chin in and then looking up over that left shoulder. So we draw the chin in first so that we make a connection, right? Bringing the neck and the spine in alignment. Otherwise, if you're just pushing your chin out, you're going to be compressing your neck. We don't want to do that. Breathe here. Look forward and release. Take your right leg and extend it all the way forward and bring your left foot into the inner right thigh. Now, if you have a little bit more advanced of a practice, bring that left foot up on top of the right thigh for half lotus. You might need a strap here for that right foot. If you do, go ahead and put it around the foot. I don't want you struggling to reach for the foot. So if you're using a strap, place it around. If you're not, let's inhale the arms all the way up and exhale, reach out for the foot. Take hold and then draw your shoulders back. Square your chest with the right thigh. Take an inhale and on your exhale, fold in and let's start to get into that hamstring and maybe you feel it all the way through the whole back body. Maybe you're feeling it through the shoulder blades into the back. You know, it just depends on what's happening for you. And then you explore that. And explore that with the breath. So stay with this. And really feel the length the hamstring notice where the tension is that's okay right don't judge yourself be aware of where you're feeling the tension 
and then use the breath to help soften. Use the exhale to surrender. So you're not letting go of your alignment. You're simply mentally letting go and allow the thought translate into the physical reaction. Take another inhale. And after your exhale is complete, go ahead and walk yourself back up. Coming back up, often in the release of a posture, there can be a rush of sensation. So take a moment if you need to, and then we'll extend the left leg all the way forward and take your right foot into the inner left thigh or on top. Now know that if you need to take a break or a rest, feel free to pause anytime, especially as you're getting to learn it if you're new to a yin practice or to a yoga practice. Now let's sweep the arms up or place the strap around the left foot, inhale and use that exhale to take yourself all the way forward. And drop your head, tuck the chin in, no tension in the neck. And when we first come into a posture, often there's a little bit of panic as we feel how tight area is that we're first tapping into that might be different depending on what's going on with you. So for some it might be the hamstring, for some it might be the back. Now I want you to hug the underarms into the body and inhale, send the center of the chest towards the foot. Exhale again, find a little bit more length and stay here. And then slowly rise, come all the way back 
up and take your right leg and straighten it out. Relax the knee. Roll out your ankles. And then crossing the legs again, you're gonna interlace the fingers together behind the back. So clasp the hands, feel the palms pressing together, fingers are interlaced. Put the thumbs into the base of the tailbone and then push the tailbone into the thumbs so you feel again the belly draw in. Then send your shoulders back. Then send your chin in. So again, you don't want to compress the neck by pushing the chin out. Chin in, then the gaze can come up. So feel everything kind of pressing into each other. The thumbs into the tailbone, the tailbone back into the thumbs, the shoulders pressing back, the heart rising. Take a deep inhale. Keep your elbows slightly bent. See if you can lift your arms now. Maybe just a bit, maybe farther. Explore it. So with the wrists underneath the shoulders and the knees underneath the hips, you're going to inhale and arch the back, lift the chin a little bit, open your chest, and then exhale, pull that belly all the way up into the back, pull the chin towards the throat, let the shoulder blades come off the back here. And let's keep doing that on your inhale, look up, let the sit bones spread wide, the hips are open. And on your exhale, like a Halloween cat, round it out. Again. Two more. Just use your breath. If you want to hold one of the postures, whether it's the cat or the cow, you can stay there if that feels good to you and just keep breathing in that position. Like if I were to hold it here in my cap, keep pressing the belly up into the back. Feel the shoulder blades coming off the back, all that tension underneath them. And then slowly sit your hips back into your heels Extend the arms all the way forward for child pose. If the hips don't make it into the heels, feel free to use a pillow here to sit on underneath your hamstrings, underneath your hips. And with the arms extended all the way forward to start, tucking the chin in, forehead may be coming down. I want you to crawl your arms to your left. And as you get as far over with the arms as you can, put your left hand on top of your right hand and just anchor it down. And with the chest staying square, squared off with the floor, breathe. Just feel what's happening in the right side. Keep your right hip and your left hip exactly where they were. Try not to let the right hip come up and around. And then we're going to come back to center, pause, breathe, and crawl to the right. So go as far over to the right as you can, and then place your right hand on top of your left hand to anchor it down, keeping the hips square 
sitting into the heels or into your pillow. Chest is square with the floor. Feel the length in the left side. And then come on back to center. Folding the chin in, coming to neutral. And then inhale, come back up onto all fours. And then we're gonna take the left hand out and we're gonna slide the right arm underneath the chest. And you're gonna drop down onto that right shoulder and you're gonna press through the left fingertips and lift the elbow up slightly so it makes a window for your head and then keep melting down into that right shoulder onto the side of the head if the floor is too far away from your head feel free to put a pillow underneath there and see if you can let that shoulder drop down you can use a pillow underneath your head and your shoulder if that helps okay just give it time Again, the hips stay square, so the left hip wants to kind of pop forward here towards the left shoulder. Press the left hip back and keep melting down into that right shoulder. Breathing deeply. And then slide the right arm out, come back onto all fours, pause, come to neutral. When you come to neutral, keep the belly engaged. So try not to let the back arch and the belly drop. Keep everything hugging in, just to be able to come back to a neutral position. And then we'll take the right fingertips up to the front corner of the right mat, and we're gonna slide that left arm underneath the chest, the palm of the left hand faces up, and you're gonna roll over that left shoulder, roll over the head. If you can look up underneath that right arm, look up a little bit underneath that right arm. You can do that with your eyes closed, just stay in the direction of the head, the rotation of the neck. Keep that right hip back so that the hips stay square as you melt down into that left shoulder. Pressing through the right fingertips will create a little bit more action in the posture. And become again aware of the Ujjayi breath. slide the left arm back out from underneath coming back onto all fours again engage the abdominal muscles lift your feet roll out your ankles and then let's go ahead here and we're going to walk your knees forward Open the heels wider than the hips and you're gonna sit down in between them. Now, again, you might wanna put a pillow underneath your butt here so that when you land, your hips you know, are much higher so there's not 
so much pressing into the knees that might be too much for you. And don't feel like the knees have to stay together here. They can open up and that will be more in line with your hips. So do what feels right. If you can get those feet to be, the tops of the feet to be flat on your mat, the toes to point straight back, do that. If you need to add an extra mat or some, a blanket or a towel underneath your ankles and shins, that might help because it's pretty sensitive in that area if you haven't been doing this very much. Then from here, either if sitting up into this is already enough, stay here. Maybe you have some freedom to go back. So again, depending on where you're at in your practice, if you're more advanced, feel free to take your posture right away if that means coming all the way down. And if you do that, arms reach back up overhead, scoop the tailbone underneath you and access the quadriceps. Feel those thighs. Keep the tailbone scooped underneath so you still are creating some length, some space in the lower back. So there is a back bend as you move backward here, but you can decompress more by scooping the tailbone underneath. So again, maybe it's on the fingertips. Maybe that's where you feel it. The next phase would be your elbows. So you go one elbow at a time. And if you are partially back, don't drop your head. I'm not even gonna do it. Keep the chin neutral. So the chin is more tucked in towards the throat like we've been doing. And scoop that tailbone underneath and feel the thighs and lift, it's a subtle lift, lift through the chest. Heart center rising, opening. We close off the shoulders so much because we're closing off. We're kind of shutting down through our heart, right? It's an emotional reaction, an emotional response to maybe all the stress that you might be feeling. We protect, we put a shield on. So as we move into these postures where the chest is opening, we're having to let go of that shield and that can be vulnerable. And physically, it can be challenging because of the position we've been carrying ourselves in. Let's take another breath here from wherever you are. And then after the exhale, go ahead and slowly rise. Come all the way back up. And again, back up onto all fours into a neutral position. Keep the abdominal muscles engaged. If you want to roll out your ankles again, roll out the ankles again. And then we'll get ready here. Let's go ahead and take a downward facing dog. So the hands shoulder distance apart, fingers spread wide. Point the four fingers forward with the creases of the wrist parallel with the front of the mat. Just wanted you to see that. Keep your feet hips distance or wider. That will help as you press up into your down dog. Again, hugging the belly in pressing the heels towards the floor. That doesn't mean they have to get to the floor. Just find the connection to your legs, strengthen the legs. And maybe you wanna walk it out a little bit, bend one knee and straighten the other leg and feel yourself all the way down through that calf muscle and then alternate it. Just take your time. If you wanna walk the feet in a little bit closer, you're more than welcome. But if you go wider, that's gonna give you a little bit more freedom here in your down dog. So that might help, that might help you go deeper. And then try to access the connection to the arms, the muscular energy of the arms, rotating tricep down and then hug the underarms in. Chin again tucks in and energetically feel like our magnets on the inner arms and they're drawing towards each other as the triceps rotate down. And then with all this connection here, see if you can press the chest a little bit towards the thighs. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take that right knee forward for single pigeon and slide your left leg back. So depending on your hip, 
is where that right foot will be. And I want to make sure that you see this. So for some, that right heel needs to stay more towards that left hip bone. You might need to sit up on a pillow. So if you want to put a pillow underneath your right hip, do that. Now, if your hip is pretty loose, you can inch your foot, your right foot more forward until you feel the connection to that hip. You want to square the hips off with the floor. Take a deep inhale and exhale, fold. Now, you might want to put a pillow underneath your chest here, underneath your head. Again, use whatever props that you need to give you support to allow yourself to really fully go into the posture. That doesn't mean what it looks like. What it looks like needs to be about the alignment. So don't worry about how far you appear to be in the posture. No matter how many props you're using, if you've connected to where the tension is, you are in it fully. Feeling and experiencing and getting all the benefits. So now be in here and breathe. This is a longer hold. You're gonna stay in that hip for a bit. Take 
another deep breath here. And after the exhale, release. And again, whether it's downward facing dog, child pose, or if you want to move through a vinyasa up onto my knees this time, dropping the chest all the way down. The wrists are underneath the elbows here. And then you're gonna lift the chest, keep the elbows slightly bent, drop the shoulders, opening up, feeling that back bend. And then coming back through to downward facing dog or child pose. together bound angle so hold on to the feet and again if you want to sit up on a pillow sit up on a pillow lifting the hips here will give you again more freedom to get into the posture it's okay if your knees are up and if you want to stick some props underneath your knees go for it all right make it work for you posture is always accessible all we have to do is do a variation just changing it up to make it accessible for you. Keep your shoulders down. Now, as you hold on to those feet, keep the feet glued down and then pull on them a little bit, but don't let them lift off the floor. So let that give you a little bit of an anchoring to lift the chest. Keep your chin in. Take an inhale. And on your exhale, maybe the chest comes a little bit more forward. It's okay if it doesn't, just sit straight. Some of you might come farther forward. Now maybe your elbows come into the thighs and you can anchor the thighs down with the elbows. Keep the abdominal muscles, the belly drawing in and then move the heart center forward and explore that chin in, shoulders back. So the belly draws back, the shoulders draw back, the chin draws in, everything goes in and then from there, you create the space. That's where you find it. So there's a connection. We continue to connect into ourselves deeply. And from that place, we create the space. If you just try to open everything up and disconnect, you'll actually injure yourself. So people that are incredibly flexible, sometimes don't get the full benefits of the posture because they actually disconnect in the posture. They come out of their hip, right? Whatever the posture might be, they go over to the side too much rather than stay square in the hips. So just feel everything connect, feel everything hug in, and from there, explore opening. Here, I want you to come down onto your back. Hug the knees into the chest, hug the thighs in, and drop your shoulders down. And let's prepare for a twist. So let's bring the right knee over the left knee. You can keep knees side by side. You can also keep the right knee in and extend your left leg. Lots of different options here. And you're gonna send your hips to the right side of your mat and then drop the knees over to the left. Again, you can use a pillow here to land the knees on so you're not over twisting in the back if that's bothering you. 
If it's comfortable to drop the knees to the floor, by all means, go for it. Maybe you want to put your left hand on your right knee. And reach your right arm out with the palm facing up. Send the right shoulder down as you send the right hip away from the shoulder. So feel some space in that right waistline. And your the rotation of your head is anywhere that's comfortable for your neck. Traditionally, it would be over the extended arm, the right shoulder. But if that doesn't feel okay, then let the gaze be up. Even if it's with the eyes closed, just the rotation of your head so that it's safe on your neck. And connect to your breathing. Fingers go in between the big toe and the toe next to it and wrap under. 
Or maybe you can grab the outside edges of the feet, lifting them up, happy baby pose. You, when you're laying on your back, your chin is slightly lifted so the throat's open and the neck has a natural curve in it. Now in happy baby pose, if you've got your feet in your hands or your toes and your fingers, you're gonna push the feet and the hands into each other. See if you can press the elbows inside the shins and push them away, right? Push out with your elbows a little bit into the shins and try to press the tops of the thighs down as you press the feet up, but you're holding the feet down with the hands and then roll the shoulders back down. So there's a lot happening in this child position. And for you, if it's in your practice, if you'd like, you're more than welcome to take a straddle split here, opening the legs up. Maybe you wanna hold onto the thighs or the calves or even the feet. Trying to keep that lower back down, shoulders move down. And this is just an option. You do not have to do this. It's just an option in this part of your practice from half, from an option in this part of your practice from child pose. Child pose, you know, there's different things happening. So whichever you prefer, or you can do both. Again, be in your breath. and then just separate your knees and you're going to start to rock side to side maybe even making some circles so you can push into the right hand the left. so you can push into the right knee the left knee and you're circling the knee as you do that so it's like wax on wax off and go the other way exercising your brain there You can do this with the knees together, rocking side to side, or taking the knees into big knee circles here. And then hugging the knees, the shins, the thighs in. And let's extend the left leg all the way forward. Keep the right knee coming towards the right underarm. Straighten your right leg up for a moment. Flex the foot. Push the hip down into your mat. So maybe that's holding the leg back behind the hamstring or the calf. Maybe you can grab the foot. And then we'll switch. Left knee comes in, right leg is gonna extend. And then we're gonna take that left leg and bring it in line with the left side of your chest. And feel the leg pushing down into the hip and the hip pressing down into the floor. Your arms are going to reach overhead, and I want you to reach through your toes and reach through your fingers. Keep reaching. Put your right ankle over your left ankle. Grab the right wrist and gently pull on it just a little bit more. Feel that right side. And then switch. Take your left ankle over your right. Grab your left wrist and gently pull. Extend again through the fingers and through the toes. Big extension, big breathe, big breath, and slowly release. Go ahead and float your arms out, float your legs out. 
Visualize a snow angel. And then tuck your shoulder blades underneath you slightly so they're on your back. And the shoulders drop down. And that naturally opens space in your chest, in your heart center. Chin is slightly lifted. Close your eyes. If you need to put something on you, please do so. Now to fully surrender into final resting pose, into Shavasana. Let's take a very deep inhale and hold it. hope to see you again soon and if you continue to do this particular practice every day which I know some people are, are doing my other online YouTube class every day that is an amazing way to continue to explore the openings that are happening in your body and even sometimes where what was more open on one day the next day might feel tight depending on what's happening within you, what's going on in your life. So doing the same postures still is bringing something brand new on a daily basis and a way to explore how you feel in you on a daily basis. Again, thank you.